So I'm doing a personal challenge where I use the ROG Ally over there in full desktop mode. And even though I'm only one week in, I already have a couple of thoughts and you may consider why the big fuss, this isn't really a big challenge, but for me it actually is because of two reasons. The first one is that I love handle gaming and that's the big idea of these consoles and that's why I have a lot of different handle consoles. You may probably already seen those in the previous videos. So that's actually a big factor for me. And the second thing is that I haven't owned a proper PC gaming since 2007. Well, I did have a laptop in 2009, but I don't really count that one. And even though this isn't the most powerful PC out there, this still is a proper desktop PC if you put a mouse keyboard and the monitor on it. And I really want to see how the ROG Ally works in this mode. I have tested it out in the past a couple of times. You probably seen that already, but I really want to proper test it out this time. And uh, in this week, did I already fail the challenge? Well, maybe, <laughs> but I'll get to that in a minute. All right, so first thing first, why I'm doing this. As I said, I really want to see what I'm missing when having a personal desktop PC. I know it's not the same thing, but technically you can still do all the same things as you can do with a tower PC, a big uh, PC. And because I already have the ROG Ally, it's full Windows on it, and technically I can do most of the same things, well, with limited power, but I can already do most of those things. And I wanted to try it out and see what I have been missing, what's the experience, if I can still play with a mouse and keyboard, because believe me, it was pretty hard. And I will actually see by the end of this challenge if I'm now considering getting a proper desktop PC. So this will be interesting. Okay, first thing first. You probably seen my other videos where I have the ROG Ally constantly sitting here on my desk. So it's always hooked up to a monitor. I have a dock and I'm switching between those quite often. And usually I was using the Logitech MX Master Skis and the um, MX Master 3S mouse. So there weren't proper gaming peripherals, but it was very easy to switch the inputs between the ROG Ally and my MacBook whenever I need it. So it was already there. Just switch the input on the monitor and that's about it. And talking about monitor, trust me, I know this isn't a gaming monitor. This is an ultra wide LG monitor. I don't even remember the refresh rate for it. I think it's 100 FPS if I remember correctly, but the input is not the best. So is not really a proper gaming monitor. But for the ROG Ally, this should be fine. And actually this monitor I am using a lot while editing these videos also for work. So I actually love this monitor. But if this challenge goes well, then I will consider getting a new monitor. So as I said, I already had pretty much everything that I needed, but I did decide to go for some extra peripherals. I do have the Gavastar M1 Pro mouse, which I've already made a video about. And then I got this keyboard yeah you can see the name right over here it's called Akiris or something like that yeah it was a pretty cheap mechanical keyboard but uh, to be honest as a starting keyboard it's really good and uh, talking about this whole setup because i didn't mention the monitor keyboard and mouse the docking station that i use currently is this one from jsox the best feature about it is that it has an internal ssd so technically i can get extra storage with it and this one has one terabyte to be honest i haven't test out playing games directly from the ssd i did that a while back with the steam deck because you can also use that one with the steam deck but uh, yeah that could be an interesting aspect so yeah i pretty much already had everything that i need and now i can actually start using uh, the energy array as a full-fledged pc and even though i already technically started this challenge before actually considering it the whole process started when uh, diablo 4 came out in on game pass sorry if you can't be friends after this but i gotta say that i haven't played a single diablo game so far and this week was my first time getting into diablo 4 and i actually really like it i didn't think that i will get into it that quickly but it's a really fun game and uh, i know that you can play it with a controller and it's already out on the ps5 and the xbox but uh, for me, somehow, I already consider that these type of games work better with a mouse and keyboard. I'm still struggling with that, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I wanted to have uh, the experience as I remembered it. The old times, these type of games were played with a mouse and keyboard. And I wanted to do that. I really don't know how people play it now. But for me, these kind of games always were with a mouse and keyboard. And uh, 
this is the game that got me into starting this challenge. Now, first thing first, let's talk about the ROG Ally itself and uh, what's the experience of using it at the core of this whole setup. Well, I did expect it to have a couple of hiccups here and there, and to be honest, none of them were too much and the experience was pretty good so far. The ROG Ally is actually in a strange phase where it's not perfect for handheld mode but it's also not perfect for full-fledged windows in the sense that you still get all these launchers and you have armory crate with the ROG Ally and in handheld mode this doesn't work all the time. You still need to restart a couple of tools here and there. It always boots up in regular windows and then I have to open armory crate. I know that normally it should open up armor crate right after you power it on. Sometimes it does but for me most of the time it doesn't. And funny enough now that I'm using it as a full-fledged PC sometimes I still get uh, the armory crate whenever I'm powering on the ROG Ally. And uh, there are a couple of things that either I got used to it or I'm still struggling with uh, remembering all the things and where they were but I was using a lot of the internal ROG Ally buttons to switch between different settings and of course you can still do that in full windows but there were already there and most of the time I still prefer pressing those buttons to change between FPS, between voltage, CPU boosts, lightning screen brightness and all that. So because all these settings were already there so it was really useful for portable mode I still use those ones so most of the time I need to reach out to the ROG Alley but it's fine it's already here on my desktop so it's not a big issue. But sometimes things like that seems that the uh, ROG Ally is somewhere in the middle, so not necessarily a full handheld console, but also not a full-fledged PC. But that's just a gimmick, don't get me wrong, it's not a really big issue. And you can still clean it up if you want to, you can still use, as you know already, with like a tower PC or whatever, so that experience would not go away. I really got used to having the plug and play experience, so Windows is not really that, and uh, most of the time I still struggle with Whenever I want to boot a game or install a game, I need to re-download a couple of other launchers like it was with Diablo. And things like that are not that common to me anymore because the console experience is way easier. Of course, you still have to put patches and updates for the games, but most of the time you can just skip it if you just want to start the session already. But with Steam and other launchers, most of the time you actually have to update those games if you want to play them. Of course, there are workarounds. You don't need to do that every time, but this is just a feeling that I get whenever I'm using Windows nowadays. And again, I know that these things may upset some of you, but this is just my experience. This is something that I haven't done in a long time. And uh, I'm really learning all these things using a full-fledged Windows PC. So bear with me. This is just my experience. So let's talk about a couple of games that I have played. First and forth, of course, Diablo 4, because that's the game that actually made me starting this challenge. And as I said, this is actually a really fun game. I didn't know that I would like it this much. I don't have too many hours in it quite yet because this challenge is still early. But when it comes to gaming, I actually tried as much as possible to use the ROG Ally and in desktop mode only. As I said, I did fail actually with one exception, but I'll get to that in a minute. But I can assure you that the ROG Ally was indeed used in desktop mode exclusively. Yeah, sometimes I do feel like I want to pick it up and go on a couch and play some games because I am a handheld guy. But actually, I also like the experience of sitting right here on my desk, on my comfortable chair and play some games with the mouse and keyboard. Considering that I haven't done this in a long time, it actually brings back a couple of memories. So it's a really fun experience and uh, actually started using the ROG Ally a lot more, even for browsing and some other stuff. I do have a MacBook, which I also use for editing these videos and I haven't picked that one up except for editing. That could also be a challenge uh, to use the ROG Ally for editing videos. I have been considering that one but I'll see if I can make a video about it. But uh, other than that the ROG Ally was used also for browsing, watching some movies, YouTube content, analytics and all that. So it was actually my main PC not only for gaming but also for all the other stuff. The experience was quite nice. I really enjoyed it. Besides Diablo 4 I did try to play some other games that work better on a PC so with a mouse and keyboard and uh, some of those games are as uh, course first person shooter so either that or some games that are not available for consoles one of those examples is portal revolution so that one is 
a fan main game and I love Portal and I did want to try that one out and I have been using that with the mouse and keyboard I did try out also a controller at some point but for this challenge I tried to use mouse and keyboard only other games that I have been playing and I really enjoyed using with the mouse and keyboard is a total manager this is also a game that I have played a lot when I was younger but I haven't done that in a while especially because on a console you can't really do that you really need a mouse for this type of games and uh, I have been enjoying playing this game so as I said a lot of these examples are just bringing back a lot of memories for me so maybe this is what makes this challenge a lot of fun so as a spoiler i will say that it wasn't that difficult to keep this challenge up and running and i'll continue on doing it actually so it will not start with this video especially since i want to play a couple of these games and more and more so diablo 4 total manager and a couple of others will i will continue on playing using the rg ally in desktop mode and a really fun experience that I had was actually trying to use a mouse and keyboard with the FIFA games or FC24, how is it called now? I do have FIFA 23 on Game Pass, so I tried that one out. And actually, I have been playing FIFA for a long, long time using a mouse and keyboard. So I was really good using a keyboard. And even though I have been playing for many, many years in this mode, considering that I haven't done that since 2007, I gotta say I completely forgot on how to play FIFA using a mouse and keyboard. Being able to forget how to do that was quite shocking for me. And uh, it wasn't the only experience, but I really expected that I will be able to play FIFA like the old times. More complex things, that I do with the controllers forget about those ones I couldn't really do anything and I tried to remap the keys to look at the default keys but no it's quite complicated for me I did mention at the beginning of this video that even though we're only one week in this challenge I already failed and I actually knew that I was going to do that but it was okay either way I did that as a personal decision that I will make an exception with this game and you probably understand why, because I'm talking about Helldivers 2 and I am playing that game with my friends, so it's really fun. Maybe because it's a shooter game and I don't want to play with a controller. I know that you can do that on Steam as well, but most of my friends are now on the PlayStation, so that's the platform we will play on. So that's why probably I avoided getting into that game, but one night we decided, okay, let's just try it out. And actually it's really fun and I have been playing it with friends and having the voice chat and uh, doing a couple of missions each night is really fun fun so hopefully you understand why this challenge comes with this exception of playing hell divers because you cannot stop this game i really like it so far it's really fun it's really entertaining especially the friendly fire it's really amusing and we have a laugh every time we play it so yeah i'll continue on playing that one okay so what are my thoughts after one week as i said i really like it uh, so far it's more fun than not so um I really don't see an issue over here. I like having a full-fledged Windows PC once more and being able to play games because I did have a lot of other Windows machines but not gaming ones. And the experience is really fun using again a windows for gaming it's really interesting and reminds me of old time so maybe that's why it makes this whole challenge a lot of fun playing it in handheld mode so far i haven't missed it i still have this knack of picking it up and uh, playing in handheld mode but that's just because i love handheld gaming but i can live without it i wouldn't remove completely the handheld experience from my life because I love handheld gaming, but so far so good, I didn't feel the need to pick it up. This can be a struggle for me of using this challenge, but as I said so far, I actually like it more than not, so yeah, I will not stop uh, anytime soon. So considering that I wanted to make this whole setup as complete as possible, I tried to make it with all the accessories and the peripherals that I actually see myself having in a full-fledged PC, and uh, I added a little thing over there, and uh, as you probably already see it right next to the ROG Ally. So that's the Epilog, the GB operator, and um, it's a fun little device, a retro thing, where you can actually plug in your old Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance uh, cartridges inside that mini device, and uh, you will be able to play all your official cartridge games on a PC. And of course, uh, you can do that on the ROG Ally. You simply plug it in with an USB to USB-C cable and uh, I was able to do that uh, using the JSOX dock and once you do that just install a software and uh, plug in the cartridge and you're all set. Keep in mind that 
even though it's using the official cartridges this is still technically emulating because i made that mistake once in one of my older videos and people were complaining about uh, the things that i stated but you are able to play your official game so everything is official you can actually download your roms and uh, if you have an unofficial cartridge you can actually rewrite that one if you want to but be careful with that so yeah you could say that i tried to make this whole setup as close as possible to how I envision having again a desktop PC would be like. Um, it's not much. Uh, this is just a starting point, but I'll continue on with this challenge and see where this takes me. I'll see how the ROG Ally handles uh, all these games and uh, using it in, in this mode. So far, so good. I actually like it. And I do see the ROG Ally as a two in one device at this point. So, once again, this. PC handhelds uh, demonstrate that are pretty powerful and I know they will not be as powerful as your thousand dollars uh, PCs out there but for most of you this will be enough for me at least for now it's enough but who knows maybe once I tested this uh, desktop experience I will uh, get into more expensive uh, gear but uh, so far I really like how this plays I like the experience I like having the possibility of taking my core with me and play it on the go so so far this experience I really love it and I really hope that more and more consoles will come out I think I rambled quite enough about this topic as I said I'll continue on doing this challenge and I'll see if I do a follow-up it depends on what you guys want but if not I can also share it on uh, the community tab so make sure to check uh, the comments right over there but so far so good this experience is really nice i like it a lot more than i hoped and uh, it actually brings back a lot of memory so maybe that's the most fun part from this challenge all right that's it guys hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching me rambling once more about gaming this is silvio and this is the tech unravel and i'll catch you in the next video